Hi everyone, I'm Srikant Gattu. Uh, today I was asked to talk briefly about the career prospects and the future for those physicians, the doctors, medical doctors who chose or are planning to choose MD in pharmacology. So um, before I go into the details, a little bit about my background. I have done my MBBS from uh, Tirupati SV Medical College and later on I did my MD from uh, Ramchandra Medical College Chennai and I have also done a uh, Masters in Pharmaceutical Medicine from uh, Hibernia College from uh, Dublin in Ireland. <clears throat> so currently I am uh, working with Novartis group of companies and uh, I've been in the field of clinical research and clinical development together put together about uh, 11 years now. So uh, compared to the opportunities that everyone gets after doing MD Pharmacology nowadays, the scope has evolved so much compared to what it is. it was like 10 years or 15 years back. And in, in, uh, in a very optimistic way, I can say that the sky is the limit for those who have specialized in uh, this uh, subject as MD Pharmacology, of course, depending on their mindset. So just talking briefly about the options. So one can always choose to go traditionally into academia, going into the medical colleges. Uh, they will be into teaching and also part-time research within the academia. And the second option is industry, which most of you might have heard and has been um, the motivation for many people to choose MD Pharmacology. And then the third one, uh, we'll go into the details of industry in a bit, but the third option is uh, hardcore research. Um, where people can uh, join institutes like uh, uh, Tata Cancer Institute in Mumbai or in uh, Ames, PGA Chandigarh or Jipmer, NIMS, these kind of institutes where uh, you know some people might choose to go for further specialization in DM clinical pharmacology and continue to grow their career in the research on a hospital setting. Now let's uh, talk a little bit about opportunities within the industry. So opportunities within the industry are also very diverse. So if you just stick to the traditional lines within, within the industry, one can always choose to go into medical affairs uh, area, which is most uh, popular option that is available in India. And uh, the other option is pharmacovigilance because there are so many companies, not only the sponsored pharmaceutical companies, but also the IT companies like Tata, Consultancy, Cognizant, Quintiles, like service providers, everyone is getting into the pharmacovigilance. So that is also uh, a good uh, venue to uh, get into uh, you know, the pure medical science and drug related patient safety related uh, opportunities. Uh, there is also medical writing uh, opportunities, but the one that is uh, which is my favorite and where I have been spending a lot of time is clinical research or clinical development. So um, within uh, clinical research, again, within India, there is a research in uh, you know for already existing or approved uh, indications and then explore them further into additional indications. There is a lot of research um, for the you know, BAB studies, uh, but for um, talking about clinical research for the new drugs, new drug development, uh, there is a lot going on uh, behind the scenes within India, but then of course, there are a lot of uh, clinical research opportunities outside India as well. If you're working in uh, CROs, which is contract research organizations like Quintiles, PPD, Paraxel, so you will be sitting in India in these companies, but still be supporting the new drug development in the Western world as well. So that is also an opportunity. But uh, these are the traditional lines within the industry. But some people who uh, may believe that uh, they would like to try something different, uh, slightly non-medical, non-scientific. So there are people who have done MD Pharmacology and then stepped into the commercial side, uh, you know, uh, or management side or operations, strategic side. And some people even have moved into entrepreneurs as well. So they set up their own companies and these are medics, mind you. So 
uh, they run their own business they support pharmaceutical companies by providing certain services like medical writing pharmacovigilance uh, etc and 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 then uh, when people are planning to get into these kind of uh, non medical roles within the industry of course they would uh, prefer to do some specialization for example mba etc mba in marketing mba in management mba in strategic operations etc etc and which will help them so i also know some of the md pharma people who immediately pursued mba and then completely went into commercial or marketing side so it it all depends on what really motivates you and what makes you happiness and what gives you job satisfaction so for some people it might be science for some people it might be out of box thinking into management or commercial side um so one more aspect is of course uh, the one which is really burning in most of your minds is what would uh, what would it look like for the opportunities outside india so i can talk a little bit about that as well so um to um really uh, break the ice here uh, if you really want to move outside india through the path of md pharmacology um, earlier planning is better the sooner you plan better it will be and, and more uh, successful it might it can be in terms of outcomes so uh, of course not everyone uh, can plan as early some people uh, you know start planning a little later like for example uh, i i moved to uh, germany uh, here um, like after spending let's say about 7 to 8 years in the industry or actually 6 years in the industry and then i made a move uh, and i'm based out of germany right now so uh, in principle um, getting outside india into the industry is possible both in the research hardcore research and also in the industry is possible uh, but in principle uh, how you can plan is either you plan for an interim education so for example you complete your md pharmacology in india and then plan for some uh, academic research position post doctoral position or these kind of things in uh, you know uh, research institutes in uh, us or in europe and then you spend a uh, couple of years there 2 uh, to 3 years and then you expand your expertise and then slowly move into the industry in the respective country uh the other option is uh, something like uh, how i did i started my uh, industry uh, work experience in india and then i gained a little bit of uh, experience by working in 5 to 6 years within uh, india and then i developed that expertise which is very much relevant to the developing countries in us and europe so once you have developed that expertise then with the help of that experience and expertise you can move to uh, other countries apply to other companies in the other countries and then move there and then slowly start gaining more and more global experience and uh, you know build your career on that i have seen some people do that experience a little bit more at a global scale and then come back to india at senior positions some people have uh, after a global experience they moved into uh, setting up their own companies both in india and abroad so there are uh, multiple ways how you can really thrive and then plan your 30 years of career post md um so it all depends on you know the mindset per se but in in, in principle uh, like i said at the beginning of this talk uh, you know i personally feel and i'm very optimistic that the sky is the limit for the people who choose this path of md pharmacology once they complete it it's all about mindset so my uh, final piece of advice for you would be if you plan to get into uh, this line and do uh, a lot of networking do a lot of uh, research groundwork on your own there are uh, you know multiple uh, information sources that are available in the internet right now uh, nowadays uh, so use those network that online sources that are available and then take wise informed decisions so i wish you all the best for those guys who are planning to aspire a career in this line thank you bye bye